place of fun and fantasy and adventure. On this program, I'll show you how to draw in three dimensions using the magic word size. First, we'll draw a simple chair. Now, one side will look closer to you because we'll draw larger. It'll be on the paper and it'll look larger because of the size. Then we'll draw a fancy three-dimensional chair, a throne, and later we'll add something like that to the Secret City mural. My guest today is animator Fred Miles. He created the character you've seen illustrating the seven magic words. We call the character Elmo, and Fred will show us how you draw Elmo and how you can make him come to life. I know you want to become a member of the Secret City Club, so I'll tell you how easy it is to join. Here's what you need to follow along with today. Your drawing pad, your drawing pencil, and your guest book so you can take some notes on how Fred Miles does his animation. Now, you gather those materials, I'll be right back. So you're all energized and you're ready to blast across this piece of paper and draw in 3D. You know, you have that flat piece of paper in front of you and it looks flat, right? Well, you're going to be commander of that piece of paper today and you're going to draw three-dimensional drawings using that magic word, which is size. Now let's loosen up a little bit, get your hands ready. Oh, come on, you could be more energetic than that. Come on, shake yourself up a little bit, get that blood rushing around and get excited about the drawing. We'll start with, let me see here, how about two dots straight across from each other up here? and then put your finger in the middle, a dot above and below each other, we're gonna draw a really sketchy warm-up drawing of a four shortened square. Now, I know you know how to draw these by heart, probably, but we're gonna do one more just to get your pencil moving. Two dots straight across from each other, your finger in the middle, a dot above, dot below. You're gonna be drawing these in your dreams at night because you know how to draw these so well. Four shortened squares are really good warm-up exercises to get your hands moving. Now let's let's draw a simple chair that you can sit in when you're tired. Two dots straight across from each other. Your finger in the middle. Now if you're becoming more confident with your drawing and you're getting looser and and really good at drawing these nice dark lines, you might not need to use those two dots. I always use them. I've been doing this for a long time. I still use them as guide points. Now the middle line's longer because of that word size. Middle line's longer. Slant up in this direction. Slant up in this direction. And there you have what looks like a lid to a box. But we'll turn this into the place where you sit on the chair. And then we'll draw the legs coming down. Now you can make square legs if you want to, or you can make round legs. I think I'll make cylinder shaped legs. Two lines straight down. Nice and dark lines. And then don't draw straight across, but curve the bottom. And then draw a guide line and then come in a little bit, not from the corner, but come in a little bit, come in a little bit here and curve the bottom. Same thing over here, not from the corner, a little bit in, and then look at this, a guideline. That's so these are lined up. And then curve it using size. See how this is larger than both legs? And then you shade the left side, shade the left side, and then you might want to shade the left side over here too, that back leg. And then add some shading all the way down along here. Now, if you wanted to, you can put some wood grain in here. And later on, you could add extras, like you can draw a little character sitting inside your chair or sitting on top of it eating breakfast or playing some games with their friends. You can do anything you want to your drawing. Take your pencil and line these up. Make sure these line up. And then you line up the top. And instead of going straight across, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to curve the top like this. Make it a round smooth top and then draw the thickness using size that magic word today this near part of the post see it comes straight up from underneath it's a little bit larger it gets smaller as it curves away and then there you go nice and sketchy you don't have to be really neat and tidy right now you can go back later after the lesson and clean up your drawings add those extras whenever you can add extras and make sure you're drawing more unique and more original of your own style now you know what i'm really excited about today we have a special guest 
and his name is Fred Miles. Fred Miles is the artist that created that character Elmo, the cartoon character that's illustrated all those magic words for us, the cute cartoon character with the funny nose. And Fred's going to show us how to draw Elmo today. Hi, Fred. How you doing? Well, hello, Commander Mark. How are you? Welcome to the Secret City. Thank you. It's great to be here. Do you like Elmo? <laughs> no, I love Elmo. I think Elmo explains those magic words in a really <laughs> funny way. It's really creative. Elmo has a good time here in the Secret City, I'll tell you that. He's a good sense of humor, too. Yeah, he does. Would you like to learn how to draw Elmo? I would love to learn how to draw Elmo. Well, in fact, I'm in the Secret City to teach kids how to draw Elmo so they can draw him at home. That's so exciting. You know, I can't wait until to, to see how you make these just simple lines come to life with animation. Well, it's not that hard. You know what? Zebtron's really interested, too. Zebtron is. Okay, well... <laughs> You've seen him, right? I, I'll look forward to seeing Zebtron. Well, Zebtron, he'll stop by in a little while. Okay. I'm going to go back, I'm going to draw a really fancy three-dimensional royal throne, and you keep drawing with some elbows. Okay. Right? See you later, Fred. Goodbye, Commander. I can't wait to see how Elmo comes to life. Now, let's draw a throne. We drew a simple chair. We'll draw a throne right here, two dots straight across from each other. Now, you can make this this really nice royal throne as fancy as you want. You don't have to limit yourself to just what I draw. You can add any extras you want. Draw a nice loose foreshortened square. Two lines, the middle line again is longer. We'll start with a real thick box because this is going to be a chair that the king, we'll say King Arthur, can sit right inside this chair. A light line in this direction. Then you go back, go across. Follow the lines you've already drawn. These are good guidelines. Come across. And now you have a nice indention. Draw the bottom of the chair. And now we put the scoop, the place where the king would sit, and line that up. And you know what we could do? You could put a cushion here, or you can just draw a really interesting scoop. Wouldn't that be comfortable to sit in and just lounge there after a hard day at school? <laughs> okay. I bet King Arthur gets tired and has to sit in this and really relax a lot. The royal back to the royal chair. And then we have to put some kind of fancy ornaments on top here. We can put a flag, or, or what do you want to put? Maybe some round circles, okay? Some jewels, some, some royal jewels on top, and then we'll come down and loop up. And then you want to come down a little bit, want to stretch this down? Well, you know, you can build out if you want to, or you can maybe taper in just a bit and come down. Let's do that. Let's come in halfway here, and the middle line's just a bit longer. See, I love doing things like this, like you can make different, you know, intricate designs or add below it or add above it. You could do anything elaborate, elaborate that you want. Now, I think I'll add, let me see, put a dot below here, and then I'll add a line slanting up. See, I'm matching these lines I've already drawn, and then slant this line up right here, around the corner, around the corner, and then you can come in or you can slant out. I think I'll slant out just to make it a little more interesting. And then I'll draw the bottom of the chair. There's the nice base where the, so the chair won't fall over no matter how windy it gets. And then add shading to the left side. I'll shade all this. I'm going to leave part of the drawing unshaded just to test you and see if you remember how to shade correctly and be consistent throughout the whole drawing. I'll shade cross-hatching, some this way and some the other way. And then I'll shade the little ornaments on top here, nice and dark and lighter and lighter, nice and dark. See, as a, the sunlight's coming from up here and it comes down hits the top of the ornament, and it's really dark underneath here, and it gets lighter as it goes up. Same thing. You following along? You keeping up with me? Make sure your pencils are sharp. Now I'm going to leave these two unshaded, and you can shade them. Draw, draw, draw. Practice your drawing 20 or 30 minutes a day. And what's the magic word you keep in your mind? Size. <laughs> I love to draw, and I know you like to draw, but you know what? There's never been a special club just for you, just for people who like to draw. So what I've done is I've created a club. It's called the Secret City Club. It's for people who like to draw. Now, you want to become a member? This is how you become a member. Each week I have a special activity for you to do, a special drawing. And when you're done with this drawing, you mail it in to me, 
and I'll make you an automatic member of this elite, super cool Secret City Club. Now, I want this club to be as popular as hamburgers, okay? So send in your drawings, and we'll make you automatic members of the club. Now, this week's drawing, this week's activity to complete is to design your own moon creature, your own moonscape inhabitant on your secret city. And this is what Cindy did for her moonscape inhabitant. Isn't that a beautiful drawing? Really intricate, nice shading. She used surface. Let's look at another one. <laughs> Isn't this cute? This is really colorful. And this is what John did. A little robot that can clean his house and dust and do his dishes and his laundry. Isn't that fascinating? Nice purple feathers. A really good blue color and then the radar antennas. Now these are supposed to give you some ideas on what you can do for your secret city inhabitants. Let's look at another one. Take a look at this. This is the robotic cloning 10. <laughs> Tim did this one. Really nice shady and he used size. See how the arms are larger than the body and they make it the arms look closer to you. And then look up in the right corner right there. You see that robot face with a lot of detail? These are some nice ideas to design your own creatures, your own moonscape inhabitants. Now remember, as soon as you send those moonscape inhabitants in, I'll make you an automatic member of the super cool Secret City Club. Now send those drawings in. Here's the address. Secret City Club, Post Office Box 444, Moraga, California, 94556. Hi, my name's Fred, and I'm an animator. Animation means life. So an animator gives life to things. In this case, I give life to Elmo. Now, so today, what I'm going to show everybody is how to draw Elmo, so you can draw him at home. A couple of things to remember that when you draw Elmo that apply to a lot of other things that dealing with figures. And the important thing to start out with, first of all, is what we call the balance line. I always start out with a balance line when I'm drawing Elmo. And that just means the line that runs down the back. If this line is straight up and down, that means Elmo is standing up and down. Then I add Elmo's body. And Elmo just has a nice big fat circle for a body. Then I add Elmo's head. Elmo's head is just a little bit smaller circle. From here, I add two legs. Now you notice that the legs at the hips are a little bit separated because that's the way hips come out. Don't make your legs come out of the same spot. That's not right. Then I add the arms. Arm will go here, one will go here, and now for the face, the way to get the placement of the eyes is right down where the nose would be, we draw a line. For where the eyes would be, we draw another line. Okay, that tells me where to put the eyes. The nose comes out of there. There we have Elmo's face. Put some hair on him. We add the legs, make the legs fatter. Make the arms fatter. Put a hand on him. And there's Elmo. This is called a construction drawing. It means that we construct or we build Elmo so that everything gets in the right place. Now, if I want Elmo in a different position, maybe he's running. In, this, in which case, this line wouldn't be straight up and down. It would be slanted. Let's see what Elmo looks like when he's running. A slanted line. Get his big old fat body there. One for his head. Put his eyes in, his nose. Now we put one leg, second leg, put in his arm, and his, his second arm. Finally, his hair. Now, what I'm going to show you is how I go from the construction drawings, which are usually made on, with pencil, to the finished Elmo, which you see in the little films. Okay, you ready? Here we go.
Hello, Fred Miles. Hello, Zebtron. How are you? I am fine today. I enjoy your Elmo very much. Oh, well, thank you. He makes me smile. <laughs> Elmo's a... Oh, he's a pretty funny guy, isn't he? I like when he does funny things, like yeah. when he chases the buzzing insect. Oh, yes. He gets pretty excited with that insect. Does he ever get tired when he moves around oh, so quickly? He does get tired. In fact, I'll draw you what Elmo looks like when he's tired. There's his eyes, and this time he has big, heavy eyelids. That's Elmo when he's tired. I think he was very, very funny when he broke the glass. Oh, he was mad, wasn't he? And when he's mad, his eyes look like this. Eyes are very expressive, and whenever you draw a figure and you want to show emotion, the eyes and the mouth are very good for doing that. I must remember that the eyes. You must show me much more of your animation. May I stay here? And you can show me all about this character? Sure, Zebtron. Stay right here and I'll show you some more. Good. Now in the Secret City Gallery, I have some really exciting drawings I want you to take a look at. Now remember, when you look at these drawings, take a, take a really good close look, take some of these ideas and you can apply them to your own Secret City creation, your own Secret, secret City drawing. Take a look at the first drawing. Here's Gory's drawing. Now this one I wanted to show you, you can use different colors of pencils. You don't always have to stick with a regular uh, dark leaded pencil. Now Gory, he took a blue pencil and you see some really nice designs, some nice flags. Some of those flags you're looking up at and nice windows. Let's look at another secret city. Take a look at Cindy's city, isn't that beautiful? She used the regular leaded pencil, nice and dark under the overhangs, nice round surfaces, beautiful windows, and look at the radar antennas on top, and the really detailed, textured mountains. This is incredible drawing. Now, you can tell she used her finger to blend the shading to give it a nice, smooth tone, and she even put some tone up in the sky, and that's a good idea. Let's look at the next secret city. Ah, this is a good idea. Now, this is done by Reed. And Reed, he even put some letters in 3D in there, some three-dimensional letters. That's kind of, that's quite a challenge. I mean, if you want to try doing that in your secret city, it might add a personal touch that you like. You can draw your name in 3D right across one of the buildings. See how Reed, he made the letter V really nice in 3D and also the letter E. You see how he started with a really large foreshortened square and he came down and tapered it and it just looks like it blends right into the bottom of the paper like it's breaking out of the, the drawing. I think that's just an incredible idea. Good imagination. A nice tone on the right side, too. Let's take a look at another secret city. This is done by William. Look at that nice sketch. Now, he sent a copy of his drawing in because he wanted to keep the original. <laughs> you know, I like the idea of making Elmo commander of the secret city for the day. What do you think? I think Elmo's a great little character. Now, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little royal throne for the creatures that live on my planetscape. Here on the Secret City, anything can happen, so, so I'm going to create a really interesting little trail coming off of the island out in the middle of the Orange Lake. The steps going down, steps going up, and then we'll have the throne sitting here. And I'll add a Direction 7 line. You see, I pencil in this so you get an idea of what my drawing's going to look like, and then I'll ink it in nice and dark. This is called freehand sketching, and then you go back and you do a cleanup sketch. And then I said in the drawing lesson I could either put a cushion here or make a scoop. I think I'll put a soft cushion so that the inhabitants of this planet will have a nice comfortable place to sit when they come up and want to sit in the throne and look at the, the view over here. I think later on I'll add a waterfall or something so they can look at the water falling and see the colors and the different kinds of fish that live down in the lake. And I'll draw two foreshortened circles and then I'll draw the thickness of the back of the chair and two vertical lines. I'm just creating this as I go along this mural. It's really exciting. You can take all these different ideas. All these magic words you learn in the lesson, those are what, those are your pencil power, right? The seven magic words. And the word for today is size. Notice how the near part of the chair is drawn larger than the far part. And you know what I like to do? I like to take up all these empty spaces and add little intricate designs and little extras 
It's like right here, I could have just gone straight across and left that blank. But I said, well, no, I don't want to do that. I want to add something different. And so I cut in a little bit into my chair. So you, you can build out of an object or you can cut into it. Or you can draw a design on the outside. I think I'll cut in. I'll leave this blank as I go across here. And there you have a nice design. And it's just not a blank wall going across there. And there's the chair, the place where the little royal highness or the king sits. And then I'll draw the back part of the chair and we'll draw the fancy ornament. Now, see, I left a spot up here because I was thinking about drawing some flags. I'll draw the flagpole now, and if I have time, I'll draw a flag. There's that flagpole. And then a little higher up, I'll draw this other flag. And then I'll draw the ornament right here. Fancy round. These could be gold or silver. When you color it in later on, you can make any designs you want. Now, remember, you can draw little segments of this. You might want to, you know, take ideas and use these in your own secret city developments that you create. And then, let me see here, what am I going to add? Some kind of a stand. Now, you see how I have the steps climbing up, and then we have steps going up into the chair. So I'll make a vertical line, a vertical line. The middle line's longer and is larger because of the magic word today, which is size, and then direction seven. Now, watch how I make this little step. It's kind of interesting how you can just cut right out of a building. You can build out of a building, or the stand, or a post, and make it a little more interesting, a little more fun to draw, a little more fun to look at, too another stand coming out. You know, since we're talking about thrones, Fred Miles said he was going to create some kind of really fancy throne for Elmo to sit in. Elmo makes me chuckle. He has many round shapes to him. His body and his nose, eyes and his crown. Elmo is wearing a crown. What is he sitting on? That's his throne. Then he must be a king. What could Elmo be king of? Well, the commander is in charge of the secret city, but maybe he can be king of cartoons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the king of cartoon, or the king of the secret city, Elmo. I, just, I can't believe how you could take a pencil sketch and make these little tiny sketches come to life with animation. It's just fascinating. I think I might try some animation sometime. Now I'm going to add the little stool right here. This is the foot rest. And then, well, here's another blank spot. And I don't like blank spots anywhere on my drawing. I like making all these fancy designs. So I think I'll put a, an extra round cushion right there. I'll make it slant and then I'll put a half a foreshortened circle. Two direction seven lines and curve the end right there. And then I'll slant it the same slant as that footstool. And then draw the bottom. I'll come down. I'll get a finer tip pen so I can put a little more elaborate design. Curve the bottom. And then I'll draw a little connecting tube. Isn't that interesting how you can come out of this little post, curve around just by putting a ball, and then draw a cylinder out of the ball, and then you have a little spot to rest your footstool on. See? You, you invent all these things as you draw your secret city. And I'm sure yours will look a lot different than mine. And it could be even more intricate, and you can use these magic words, these pencil power words. But, you know, size is the important one today, making these near ornaments or near objects larger than the far object. You see how this one's larger? And you add the shading nice and dark over here, and lighter and lighter as it comes around. Take your pencil. <laughs> I'm chuckling again because it's time to shade. Take your pencil and really get into that drawing and grit your teeth. And <laughs> okay? And then see the overhang. Make sure it's nice and dark underneath here. Nice and dark, nice and dark. And then, well, here's a different design for shading. And you see I'm scribbling the shading that matches the rock structure, and the scribbling also matches all this different style and different texture of the island that comes out of the orange lake. But look at this. I'm going to try some cross-hatching. I'll come down here, and I'll cross-hatch the shading on the front of the chair, the front of the throne for the king, for King Elmo. Elmo's the of the Secret City mural. I like that idea. I wonder if he'll ever come to life on the mural here. And then we'll draw some cross-hatching. And I like being consistent throughout an object. If I start cross-hatching here, you notice if I continue the cross-hatching down through the steps, and then on these anti-gravity devices that make the steps float up in space, I added scribbling shading. Draw, draw, draw. Add all kinds of extras to your drawings. Keep the magic word size in your mind, and I'll see you next time.
Commander Mark says anyone can learn how to draw, and Maryland Public Television now offers a 72-page book, Learning to Draw with Commander Mark. It's full of drawings and illustrations of the seven magic words, the 22 special art words, and tells how to start a local Secret City drawing club. The kit also has three non-toxic Commander Markers, a Secret City drawing pad, drawing pencil, Commander Eradicator, and official Secret City Club membership card. Send $11.95, check or money order, payable to Secret City Kit, Post Office Box 444, Moraga, California, 94556. California residents add 6% sales tax. Allow four to six weeks for delivery.